called um, Epic of America. And basically the intro quote is he talks about what the American dream is um, and what it's not. And so I'm going to open up with that. Um, and then we'll just dive right into just kind of like a, a basic introduction um, and then probably talk about, I like to start with my de- my guests like from basically childhood all the way up to where we're sitting at this point. Um, lessons learned, like coming to the United States, Um, and things like that, and we'll just kind of guide the conversation from there. And then I have a list of more specific questions. If um, things start to slow down or whatever, I can just start asking these more specific questions. We'll um, just kind of gauge how everything's going. Okay. And your level is turned way up. Fine. Yeah, I can. Heard you clicking. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Sure. I will go ahead and move out of here, and you're good to go. Everything's already recording. So. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Sweet. We got a good blooper reel out of that last one. <laughs> so. There you go. All right. So I will let you know when I start the timer, and okay. um, basically, uh, I'll go through the monologue, and then. I'll introduce you, and you can start coming on. Okay. And timer starting in three, two, one. Welcome to JJD Thoughts Podcast, Episode 4. I'm your host, John Almasy, and today I'd like to open up the podcast um, with a quote by a gentleman named James Adams. Um, He wrote a book called uh, The Epic of America, and he, in this book, he kind of describes the American dream. Um, and today's episode is going to be kind of focused on that concept. So let's go ahead and go to the quote. The American dream is that dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone. With opportunity for each according to their individual abilities and achievements. It is not a dream of motor cars and high wages merely, but a dream of social order in which each man and each woman shall be able to attain to the fullest stature of what they are innately capable and be recognized by others for what they truly are, regardless of the fortuitous circumstances of their birth or their individual positions. So that's a quote, uh, like I said, by James Adams. And I think that it really encompasses the American dream in general, where it's not just money, it's not just cars, it's not just making a crazy life for yourself or being a person that's on TV all the time and a, being a rock star or a movie star. It's, it's more than that. It's, it's about being able to realize your full potential regardless of what that potential is. Um, And if you haven't caught that vibe from the podcast yet by episode four, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see that this is what we're centered around here at JJD and the Apex. So with that, I'd like to introduce today's guest, Mr. Jason Hamm. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, So why don't just just introduce yourself. So Mm -hmm. um, you are the owner of Experimac. Yes, here in correct. Canton, correct. right? So um, why don't you just walk us through what that is, and then we can kind of rewind and mm. talk about how you got there. Yeah, uh, yes. My name is Jason Hom, and I'm the owner of Experimac uh, store in Canton. Uh, what we do is we uh, sell, trade in, repair all the Apple devices, including computers, iPhones, iPads. Mm-hmm. So we service everything, um, you know, from iPhone to computers. And then we, sold, we, we also sell the refurbished computers. Um, so we provide a lot of, you know, technical support to the community. Um, and then, you know, just people love it. Uh, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, this the computer that I'm using right now was <laughs> was repaired by you guys. That's yeah. actually how we met. I right, mean, I right. Just, I just right. kind of yes. came into the store the one day and yeah. was talking about the fact that I was trying to do this. And uh-huh. then probably six months later, I was like, hey, I know at, at that point I was just posting random things on Facebook, but we actually have a studio now. <laughs> we would love to have you on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. My, my pleasure to be here. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's what you do now, mm-hmm. right? And so the interesting thing isn't necessarily what you're doing currently, but kind of the journey to that point, right? So yeah. um, you grew up in South Korea. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So when did you um, – what was it like growing up there? If you had to point out a couple of di- main differences between uh, like American and South Korean culture as far as what it was like growing up, what, what would they be? Uh, I guess, I mean, the main difference would be uh, probably – you know, we have a lot of not like a communist rules, but the you know like a strict rules mm-hmm. that we have to follow. Um, what I really like about America when I first came here is it was my I was a 16 years old uh, high school kids, but it was just a I mean there's a freedom you know there's a nothing that I have experienced before. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of kids in South Korea, from elementary to all the way to college, I guess, they are all have to study all the time. You know, they have exams always. You know, they they spend hours even after school. They you know they went to the separate lecture or whatever to try to get, go try to get ahead uh, from somebody. Um, so there's a lot of competition, even mm-hmm. in the elementary school. It starts that early. Yeah, it starts yeah. that early. A lot of it has to do with the parents, too. You know, they want their child to be a number one. Right. Um, I, think it's, it has, I think it has a plus and minus, but a lot of times, as a kid, uh, I feel pressured all the time. Right. You know, I have to be number one student so that my parents get be happy, you know, things mm-hmm. like that. So, but here in America, I guess, um, you have a lot of freedom to, I guess you can choose what, what, what you want to be. Mm-hmm. You don't have to follow everyone's path, everyone's paths, like a South Korea. Um, you know, you have to go to the good school, you have to go to the good university, good job. Um, uh, that's the path everyone follows mm-hmm. in South Korea. But here, I feel there's a lot of opportunities, you know, you don't have to go to university if you don't want to. Right. And still be a great person and everyone recognize it and everyone appreciate what you do. That's, I, I guess that's the main difference I felt uh, over the years. Um, and then I guess, you know, if I talk more about what I like about America is not about just like your quote, earlier, um, if I just add it to American Dream, it's, it's the country of a conscious. Mm-hmm. There's no other country in the world, you know, that just stands up for what's right and what, you know, helping people. That's what the United States has been done over the past, you know, like, I don't know, maybe 50, 100 years. Right. Fighting for what's right. That's what I like about America. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, being willing to step out of of what may directly benefit mm-hmm. the country, right? Because it's there's something morally mm-hmm. incomprehensible happening right. in the world. I mean, we've <clears throat> we saw that with the the world wars or mm-hmm. or um, trying to halt. Um, I mean, I know that people kind of look at Vietnam as like a failed conflict, right? But the the mentality but, behind it right. was you know, to halt. try to help people. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, so that's what I really like about America. You know, the, the leadership, um, not just for you know, for benefit of the benefit of the country, but just helping you know people. You know, mm-hmm. where you know people are struggling. Right. So, right. Yeah. So, um, you, did you have something? Yeah. Did, do you think that like resonates through other countries in the world, or do you think they're bothered by America sticking their hands in everything? Sometimes some countries are bothered because 
sometimes they feel the United States are intervening too much. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, but I guess, um, but, but the uh, motive behind why the America does it, uh, that's what I like about it. It's, mm-hmm. They just step in because there's something going on that's not right. Right. So they want to make it correct. That's what I like about it. So, you know, over the, you know, maybe the last two years, I haven't seen that. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but it's a diminishing. But, you know, still, I mean, it's the country of a conscious, you know, I like about it. Yes. Right. So, so what prompted you moving to America at 16? Well, it wasn't my choice, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, my father um, had a business in the States. Um, he he was doing this business with one person um, in Texas, so it wasn't my choice. But we just moved over to Texas when okay. I was sixteen. Um, and how long how long did you guys stay there? Probably probably about nine years in okay. Texas, and then I just graduated from University of Texas there, um, and then I moved back to Korea again to to serve in the army. Okay. Because uh, the, all the South Korean has to go to the army, right? Uh, military service for two years. Yeah. Right. So, so even after moving to the United States and living in the United States for nine years, it's still required yes. for you to move back at right. some point and serve, unless you uh, you, uh, you you become a citizen of the United States and you just you know right you, relinquish those rights right, to right. South Korea, then so you still have to go. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Well, let's let's I mean let's let's explore that. That's, <laughs> that's something that is totally foreign to me because as as a military member, yeah, right. I when I was eighteen years old, um, I went I actually went through the entire enlistment process with the Marine Corps because mm-hmm. that's what my family is. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and my grandpa ended up sitting me down and basically told me, "Hey, you should join the Air National Guard, go to mm-hmm. school, and everything like that." And that's kind of how I ended up at Walsh. How yeah. I ended up where I'm at was through military service, but. Three days after I turned 18, I was running to the recruitment office to sign paperwork to get into mm-hmm. the U.S. military um, because we are, like, I, I'm super passionate about the flag and yeah. and the American dream and what it stands for. And it, it's amazing to be able to put on a uniform um, mm-hmm. that stands for that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I know that that's not the, I've worked with some other uh, military members from other countries, and I know that that's not always the perception of, military units in mm-hmm. other nations and stuff like that. So after spending nine years in the United States, what was it like to have to move back and, and enlist? Yeah, I mean, it was a tough time. The first probably six months, it was a really tough. Uh, I guess, you know, because I spent nine years in the States, I was a little bit, I guess... Like spoiled almost yeah, a little uh, bit. Yeah, so I feel... You know what am I doing here? Why am I here? Right. Uh, but it was, I think it was a great experience for me because it uh, gives me a different perspective, I guess, mm-hmm. um, to the you know personal life, or um, you know serving as a as a countryman. Um, I feel you know I feel proud to mm-hmm. be a part of a part of the military. But everyone has to do it. So, um, but it was a tough time because I, I couldn't adjust to this new environment right. <laughs> after nine years. <laughs> yeah. So, do you guys? I know, like, um, stateside, we have like basic training, right? Mm-hmm. You have to go. And I went to Texas. I actually yeah. went to San Antonio for nine and a half weeks, and you wake up super early and run and. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically, they tell you that you're useless and everything else for like nine <laughs> weeks, and then they try to build you back up, yeah. right? So, is there is there a process like that when you yeah. come into the South Korean yeah. army? Or you spend about probably um, three or four months in the training. Mm-hmm. That's the training period, and then you were uh, assigned to the different you know camp, right, right uh, um, units. So. That three, that three or four months was the toughest time I had. Oh, I bet. Yes. Yeah, I know it was hard for me even, yeah. I mean, because I was, I mean, I'd spent all 18 years of my mm-hmm. life here in the United States. So yeah. 
going from that down to to Lackland and having all of my freedom stripped away. And <laughs> I was told when to shower, when to go to the bathroom, when to eat, like when to wake up, when to go to sleep, what right. I wasn't wasn't allowed to wear. I mean, that yeah. was a huge shock for yeah. me. Yeah. And so I can't even imagine after. Yeah. Um, I, and that was voluntarily wanting to go down there. Yeah. So, I mean, being forcibly in put in that position, I can't imagine what that mental state must have been like right. for that three to four I months. I remember the first night in that training camp, um, about 30 guys uh, lying on a bed. Not a single person um, did not cry, mm-hmm. that person. I mean, the old, all the people in my room about 30 people, they were just crying, <laughs> including me. <laughs> I mean, they don't want to show they were crying, but right. I can hear that. And yeah. I, I was crying too. You hear them being trying to muffle it right, right. pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was a very different experience, but, you know, I have to do it because, you know, I'm still a Korean, you know, you know I have to serve my country. Yes. Right, yes. right. Yes. Yeah, and and like you said, regardless of whether that's being forced on you or it's voluntarily, like after that two years, you develop like a a sense of nationality and a sense of pride for having done it. Yeah, 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 yes. You know, if I somehow just uh, didn't do it, the two years of military service, I'll be probably shamed, you know, Mm -hmm. because, you know, everyone has to do it. Who's going to protect the country then, you know, if everyone has an excuse to, you know, uh, discharge from the military? So Right. So, yeah. So how many um, – were, was the rest of your family still stateside at that point then? No, we moved back. You, all of you moved back yeah, for that all, period? All of, the, all of us moved back. How, how many, like, siblings? How, what what, what does your one, family look like? One young, younger brother. One younger yeah. brother? Mm. Okay. We moved back, um, and then – I got a job there. I was working at the LG uh, mm-hmm. Electronics. Well, what were you doing there? Uh, I was I was working at the LG Display Company. Okay, like makes a LCD TV and monitors. Uh, I worked there at the R and D center for a long time. I guess I guess about ten years, and then after ten years. Um, um, I was uh, uh, relocated to United States here in Canton, and this is with LG. Yeah, with okay. the LG uh, work on uh, fuel cell uh, R and D, which is located at the Stark State campus right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I was there uh, for uh, controls, uh, system engineering manager. Uh, I worked there for about six years until the end of 2016, and I quit, and I started this experiment, my own company. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So what was, um, I mean, because there's a lot of technology out, like we were talking just before we started recording about hardware and, mm-hmm. and software availability and stuff like that, and you were kind of talking about how South Korea is huge on the hardware manufacturing, but mm-hmm. there's not as much software to utilize it. Right. But so what does that do to like the mentality as far as a culture if the country is built specifically on like Samsung, like Mm -hmm. you said, where it's just hardware, but there's not really anywhere to go from there? Yeah. I mean, I guess a lot of South Korea, I mean, the South Korea economy basically is run by big companies Mm -hmm. like Samsung, LG, Hyundai, car manufacturer. Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, like a mid-sized venture companies uh, that stands out and is recognized all over the world. Right. So what that means is everybody, including all the younger generation, they want to be a part of the big company. They don't want to venture out. Uh, they want to just have a safe uh, job security. Um, I guess because they pay well in mm-hmm. a big company uh, than the smaller company, but I think that's the problem we have in South Korea. They, the, the younger generation right now is they just they just want to be safe. 
they just want to be relaxed. So it's like it's like the anti almost of like what the American dream kind of preaches. Right. Where so they're, they're, you they're have to go about, out. Yeah, you have yeah. to go out and challenge everything and try to earn it. Mm-hmm. But they want to be a part of this one secure group. Be in a comfort zone. Yeah, comfort zone. Right. That's one problem right now. Um, and then also the government is also hiring all these increasing the number of employees in the government agencies, mm-hmm. the, the public jobs, the public service jobs. Right. So all the jo- young generation is trying to get a job in that area, not try to open up their small companies or try to venture out, you know, explore their capabilities. Mm-hmm. That's the problem right now. Right. And I don't see any clear way to correct that because the South Korea has been um, in after the Korean War, the, the economy actually built up, built based on those big companies. You know, they, the Samsung, Hyundai, LG, they started out as a small company, and then they become big company, and then they are the major part of the economy right, right. now. Yeah, I mean, I have a Samsung phone right. Right, sitting I mean, on the counter right here. I guess it's, which is, <laughs> I, I guess it's a good, in, in, ter- in terms of a growing, you know, size of the economy. Right. Now we are at the point where that's not going to do for us for the future. We need some kind of, I guess, the creative, innovative way to um, drive more younger people to uh, explore new opportunities, mm-hmm. not just sitting in the comfort zone. Right. I think that that's a huge um, thing with with um, even I mean people complain about like American education and, mm-hmm. and everything like that. I I listen to people all the time talk about um, the deficits mm-hmm. in in American education. But I think one of the big things that's a positive here is that um, like in high school and everything like that. When I was going through yeah. high school, uh, they would always talk about, hey, we have this computer science program that you can go to. Or, hey, there's this auto tech program you can go to. You can be a welder. You can do this. Mm-hmm. You can do that. I mean, from a, being a little kid, I was told that I could be an astronaut, a, a doctor, a nurse, a, right. a, in the military, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, what that does over time is just, th- we don't, at least I, I don't know, I don't know if I'm speaking for you here, but there's nothing inside of my head that it's like, oh, no, I couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. There's Yeah, that's not for me. Right. But it's just yeah. kind of, oh, no, I can take a jump and yeah. and give this a shot. And yeah. if it doesn't happen, okay, it doesn't yeah. happen. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, I guess it's also another uh, reason why the South Korea right now is having problem is, I mean, look at the country, about almost 80 million, peop- million people Mm-hmm. Living in the size of Indiana, imagine that. Right. You got a lot of competition among ourselves, and then still we have to compete with the outside. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's not a lot of resource in South Korea. We don't have any oils. <laughs> we don't have any <laughs> natural resource. Anything. Yeah, yeah. I think. That's one disadvantage we have, but we have overcome over the years. Um, you know, like the Samsung, LG, they grew up like a you know big major company in the world, but now they they reached a limit. I think at some point, you know, they cannot grow more. Right. So yeah, they have a cap. Yeah. So I don't know if we can continue that, um, but that that's a lot of South Korea right now sees a lot of problem with that uh, younger generation has to be more you know have more challenges um, you know just explore outside just don't stick with uh, you know inside you know just go out there and just do something right yeah just, don't be afraid to do something right. different so um, yeah yeah so yeah that reminds me of like a Robert a Robert Frost wrote a poem right called um, the path less traveled or the road less traveled Someone will probably correct me on that, but um, I mean, in that in that poem, he talks about two two paths that diverged in a yellow wood, mm-hmm. and that he took the path less traveled by, and that made all the difference, mm-hmm. right? And that's a concept, I think. I mean, and that's that's uh, an American poet yeah. that wrote that, and so it's so deeply ingrained yeah. 
yeah. in the culture that it's just like, oh, there's a path. Like, you don't All like right. the two paths that are in front mm-hmm. of you? Go ahead and start cutting down trees and just make your own. Um, so in the um, – with that being the culture mindset, so you moved back and you had this job mm-hmm. at LG and then you came and you started – working in Stark State's campus, Mm -hmm. what was it like working for LG in South Korea versus working for LG at Stark State? Uh, I mean, it's basically the same company, but the most, a lot, all the employees is already, it was used to be a Rolls Royce fuel cell, just LG bought that company. So Mm -hmm. there Mm -hmm. is already the American people working in that company. We just joined, the few people from LG from South Korea just joined that company. Um, I see a lot of things, a well, lot of you differences. Were, you were a manager, right? Yeah. But were you a manager in South Korea, or did yeah. that only happen when you came here? No, I was a, the manager in the South Korea, too. And then there's a you know a lot of man, different managers in right. the organization. But the major difference I see is um, in South Korea, I guess... I guess it's just a cultural thing, but it's, everything is a top down. Mm-hmm. See, we top, you know, the executive, you know, people just order something, and it just goes, you know, goes down to the bottom. We just follow the orders without asking why do I have to do this? Mm-hmm. You know, why, why is this way? Why can't this be a different way? Right. Why can I just suggest a different way and make it better? We don't have that communication right. in South Korea a lot. Is it, uh, is it because like when people at the bottom try to suggest ideas, they're shot down? Or is it just, like you said, a cultural thing where people are just, like from a young age, just you don't question things? Yeah. Just, I guess it's a major thing. It's a cultural thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we see that all, all like that in many different levels of the society – not just the company, but, you know, all, all over. But that's the way it is in South Korea right now. Right. Uh, but here, when I came here, everyone listens. Even if you're bottom <laughs> in the organization, if he speaks out, if he, he's the one who knows something, the top manager listens. And then that, you know, voice from the bottom is actually implementing some plan or process. So that was the main difference, and I really liked it because, mm-hmm. because you never know. I mean, if you're in the sitting at the top, you cannot see everything in the organization, right? Exactly. So mm-hmm. sometimes you just make a bad decision based on what you only know. Mm-hmm. But if you listen all the people in the organization – and then what they're thinking about and what's, you know, what's the best for the organization, then you just absorb that, all the information, and then make decision based on that. It's better decision, of course. Exactly. So that's the main difference I see, um, and I, I really like it. But, I mean, I'm not saying that all the South, South Korean companies are doing that, but there are some South Korean companies does like that it does you know the American way, um, but most of the companies uh, we just follow the orders from the top. Right. So, do you think that's what is causing the plateau? Yeah, it's part of it. Yes, yes. We see that is is it is definitely the part of it um, because we the all the you know low-level employees don't have the communication channel to the top. Right. So, I mean, they were just, you know, you know, you know, I'm going to just get a paycheck. You know, I don't care, you know, what they told me to do. I just do it. So. <laughs> yeah, I, as so, long as I see those numbers on right. a piece of paper at the end of the week, life's so, good. And that, so, I mean, that can be a really dangerous thing, I think. Right, like, right. If, if you are at the top, if you're an executive, um, and just, I mean, just from my experiences, even a sergeant, which is mm-hmm. like a mid-level manager, basically, yeah. right? And so um, I only have a couple of people under me. Mm-hmm. But if I didn't listen to them and take that information, um, one of the rules of thumb that I try to, to work on is I call it the 80-20 
And I mean, it's a lot of people use it, right? It's been used all the time, but it's listen 80% of the time, talk 20% of the time. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're able to listen and use that input and take criticism, because Mm -hmm. sometimes um, I I tell people, like, if I'm making a stupid decision, Mm -hmm. tell me as I'm making the stupid decision, not three months down the road right. after we've been making stupid decisions now right. for three months. Mm. I'm going to be more angry <laughs> three months down the road <laughs> if we're three months into stupidity yes. instead of you just speaking up at the beginning being like, ah, I don't know if that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? There's been plenty yeah. of times just trying to get this going yeah. where my friends have been like, ah, probably not do that yet. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly, but yes. you're able to... Um, a gentleman that I, I mention on here all the time, his name is Jocko Willink. He's a, he uh, wrote a book called Extreme Ownership. And mm-hmm. in that book, he, I mean, he talks about being able to detach yourself mm-hmm. um, and look at kind of like in the third person yeah. and like look at yourself as a leader mm-hmm. and be like, okay, am I doing the best thing for the people underneath of me? Do they understand why they're doing what they're doing? Mm-hmm. Do they understand how we need to get it done? Um, are they being able to operate autonomously so that they can come up with better ideas? And mm-hmm. he was like, if someone's got a better idea of the way that I'm doing something, tell me. Yeah. Because it's going to do nothing but save us time, effort, and make us more efficient. Um, and so yeah. I, that's a huge advantage, I think, yes. um, to that, being able to take the criticism from the bottom up yes. and not just rely All on right. the top-down structure. Mm-hmm. Um, so when... Um, in situations, sometimes in life, right, we people tend to think that success is all hard work, 100% hard work. And there's a lot of people that preach that. I see that all over the internet, um, different articles that I've read. And um, I mean, even I subscribe to that a little bit, where sometimes hard works beat talent when talent doesn't work hard, mm-hmm. right? That's where that quote came from. But um, there was actually a gentleman named Dr. Forrest Bird, okay? And he was a really close family friend of ours growing up. And I'm super privileged to have known this man. He actually invented, uh, he invented the first ventilator, um, in the G suit. Um, Mm -hmm. and like all of these things that he made a ventilator with a coffee can (laughs) during, in like world war (laughs) two. Um, so this brilliant, brilliant man, but he always talked about success being three things, right? Fate, time, and circumstance. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you just like, happen to be in the right place at the right time, meeting the right people, and you are able to pick up on it and make a decision. Mm -hmm. And that's where he was like, he was like, I didn't invent, he's like, I invented the first ventilator, but I just happened to be the person alive in that period of time where there was a need for this thing. And I saw an opportunity and was like, Hey, like, why don't we tape two coffee cans together and see what happens? Mm -hmm. Um, which is still mind boggling to me that he is able to come up with that. But he also is like, I didn't choose to grow up with the Wright brothers or to know Henry Ford or like any of these people. He was like, they were just people Mm -hmm. and people tend to like dissociate these really big historical figures and almost make them inhuman. Mm -hmm. They're, they're just enigmas or something like that, that they didn't have family issues or they didn't have all this other kind of stuff. But, um, from leading you to quitting LG and starting Xperia Mac, or mm-hmm. I mean, actually, I mean, really just life in general, do you think that, I guess, that there is a piece of it where it's just like, okay, this is kind of like a destiny, or this is, um, I just happen to be in the right place at the right time mm-hmm. with fate, time, and circumstance, or do you think that it's all based off of hard work and, and like, pushing yourself? Uh, yeah, I believe... Uh, not hundred percent, but I, I believe there's you know there's got to be right circumstances, circumstances, and then uh, time. But when I decided to start the experiment, um, I didn't. I did not think this is my destiny or anything right. like that. It's. I just want to be. You know, I'm. I'm right now. I'm forty. Forty eight right now. Mm-hmm. So, I just don't be. I just don't want to be outside the box. Just like I ta- told you about all the South Korean people are just working for big companies. I've been doing that for my entire my life. Right. Um, yeah. Even in America, you were yeah, still working still under for LG. LG. But I just want to go out and try to do something 
you know, for myself while I, I can enjoy what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it takes a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of um, time, and then you got to have a good good luck, I guess, too. Right. Um, it's and part then, of that fate. Right. Yeah. And then also you have to meet right person, you know, uh, to do the some new new stuff, but um, I, I think the most important thing t- to be uh, uh, success successful in your life is I think uh, you know whoever whoever act whoever do something he's gonna get it instead of um, try to sit down and think about it. Ah, uh, okay. So just go out there and do it. Right. I mean, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times, including myself, over time, I thought about a lot of things, and I thought about doing something new, um, what, you know, starting a new business or something else, but I never actually do it. Well, and what I've experienced is that it's it's almost like you come up with those ideas, and then there's like a little... A little person on your shoulder that's like, oh, yeah, no, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. you, you start, you like start talking yourself out of it if you yeah. think about it for too long. <laughs> it's like, oh, these are all the reasons why I could fail. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> when I look back, I've been open this open for about over a little over a year now. Experiment. Mm-hmm. When I look back, uh, when I thought about doing this and did not do it, actually do something about it. I would have never been in this position right now. Right. Because it's probably in my head right now still. Mm-hmm. But I, I just did it without knowing how difficult it is or, you know, I don't know the you know market in this area. I don't know the Canton area market. I don't know how many people have the Apple computer or whatever. I just want to do it. I just want to do uh, help people to fix computer. Because I love working on Apple, mm-hmm. I've been all, always a fan of Apple, so I just did it. I just did it, and then it. I realized I should have done this earlier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fi- when you I was, finally take yes, the when I was like, when oh. I was young, yeah, a little bit younger, uh, I should have done this earlier. Right. Why can I just? Do it. Yeah, early. hindsight is always twenty twenty. You realize, ah, <laughs> right. oh, man, I wish I would have done that five years ago. I know there's a difficult times and there's going to be failure and things like that, but you never know if you don't try it. You know? Right, right. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's go that's, out there. That's and the do way it. it is. So. so, what was it? Um, I mean, so you, you you've been open for over a year now, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. you, but I mean, I didn't. Out of all of the stuff that you've done, uh-huh. like all of it was with either LG. Or whatever else, like where did you get all of the experience to have the confidence to be like, I'm gonna open an Apple repair store? And was it just like a passion that you had on the side? Was working on Apple computers? Well, I'll, I've been always uh, good with the computers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I I have a you know major degree in a computer, uh, and then I was always passionate about the new technology, technology, all kinds of technology. So. I guess I, I was comfortable with handling Apple computers too because I've been using for entire my life right. ever since my high school years. Hmm. So it, it really kind of fits me. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess I was confident <laughs> when yeah, I started just confident it. Confident in your abilities because <laughs> yeah. I was thinking I was like, man, I feel like working on a LG is or a, like a Dell or anything is yeah. way different than trying to work on a Mac. Right, yeah. <laughs> and coming from somebody that like, I would look at the internals of this computer. I mean, as a nurse, I can look at the inside of a human body and be like, oh, I know what that is. Uh-huh. I don't yeah. know how that works. I'm not a surgeon by any means. Like I can't rearrange it or anything. But like if I look on the inside of a computer, I'm like, um, <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of like green things with yeah. little metal dots on yeah. it. And they all, kind of, or yeah. Although <laughs> they all kind of connect. Right now I don't work on tiny stuff like a, Phone repairs and iPad repairs, I just can't do it because my eye, and my right. eye doesn't, you know, I can't see the small stuff. But also, my fortunate, my uh, it was fortunate that I meet these technic technicians that work with me mm-hmm. in my shop. Two guys, they're really good on technical stuff. So that's I think it it, it falls into category where. The circumstances, <laughs> right, right. They it all was, just kind of lined yeah, up. Yeah, they they were the right people. They were the right guys. 
uh, right. to work on uh, joining my business. So, and that kind of, I mean, that kind of goes into like you said that you wish that you would have done that five mm-hmm. years ago or ten years ago, whatever. And there's a lot of people that fall into that trap, I think, where they beat themselves up, mm-hmm. like, man, I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> I should have done this. I should have done that. But who, like, who's to say that if you would have tried it five years ago without being in the circumstances that you were in and mm-hmm. meeting those people, that it would have either been a failure or it could have been a success like we don't know yeah um and that's where i kind of try to be at peace with it Mm -hmm. where because i used to beat myself up all the time over a lot of different things where i was just like oh man i wish i wouldn't have made that decision (laughs) and i'm sure there's a lot of people that that have that same feeling every now and then um but when it comes to this like i am doing what i'm doing now because i met jacob and i met this person and Mm -hmm. i kind of all of this stuff's kind of lining up where yeah this was the right time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's just like another principle of that's so cool about the fact that you have this business now that you're starting and you're chasing something Mm -hmm. that you're passionate about and you're um, building it with these technicians and everything is just you met the right people Mm -hmm. for your dream to actually come to fruition. Yeah. I mean, I guess the hard work, if you work hard, uh, just try to do something out uh, um, I think those kind of thing, like uh, all the right people, circumstances. Sometimes it just just comes to you. I mm-hmm. think because you you're doing it rather than sitting in a desk and thinking about it. You're doing it, meeting people, uh, search for right people. Right. You're making it. And those people are starting to become like right. attracted to like what you're pushing right. for instead of you just being like, hey, I have this idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess sometimes those circumstances. Uh, could be a just pure luck, but some, most of the time, I think, I believe, because you're doing it, it's happening. Because mm. you're doing it, you're making the right time. Right, right. I, I truly believe that way. Um, yeah, it's like uh, people that say that, it, um, I know people that talk about this all the time when they're like getting married or proposing to your wife or something mm-hmm. like that, that you can try to set up this perfect time. Yeah. Whatever, like all of these things could line up, but there's never going to be a perfect yeah. time to do it. Yeah, you, just make you it may, happen. Yeah, you may end up just proposing <laughs> on your couch covered right. in Cheeto dust after watching Netflix or something because um, there's never going to be a perfect time. Right. You just need to find the right time. Mm-hmm. So there's a difference between those two. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I mean, I really vibe with that. I, I really like something called the law of attraction, which is like if you put out negative vibes, you're going to get negative vibes mm-hmm. returned. And yeah, if you true. put out positive energy, you get positive energy true, returned. Yes. Yeah. And that's kind of what you're talking about, which is mm-hmm. just like if you're pushing forward and you're pushing the boundaries right. and you're taking the leap and you're putting out mm-hmm. all these positive vibes, you're networking with people. Yeah. Um, you bring up a podcast that you have to some random owner in an Experimax store. Um, then you end up with a <laughs> podcast guest, right? Or you end up with technicians that are willing to help you start your business yeah. because you're pushing mm-hmm. to that next level. Yeah, because I because I started it because because I I'm I'm, I'm you know uh, initiating a process mm-hmm. uh, without me probably it would not happen. Right. I'm not saying that I'm I'm the I'm the only one person who can do that, but it's just it happens to me that starting a experiment in Canton. <laughs> right. So yeah, there's there's a quote above um, the door in my boxing gym, mm-hmm. and it says, "If you want to move fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together." Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's that's something that I think is super um, pivotal yeah. to when people start these ventures, whether it's a business or um, they they decide they want to go to school or mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, if you are able to there's there's something to be said about doing it alone mm-hmm. um, because it's hard yeah I mean, it's really tough to do stuff like that alone but I think that there's even more to say about being willing um, to learn from other people mm-hmm. and kind of check your ego and say oh, I don't understand everything mm-hmm. these people have valuable input that are gonna help me get to where I'm going and then I can bring them up with me mm-hmm. um, I really like a quote um, I mean, just quoting a whole bunch of stuff now, but <laughs> I really like a quote, and I, I, I don't know who the author is, but I know I heard it somewhere at one point where it says the true definition of success is not how successful you are, but how many people you're able to bring to success with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so that principle is just kind of like yeah, I love it mm-hmm. because it's all about giving back, and it's yeah. 
um, being confident enough in yourself that, okay, I'm going to give away some of my little tips and tricks that I use to be successful because I want other people to be successful mm-hmm. too, um, which is kind of this podcast in general is just giving like, oh, these are the struggles that I had. This is what I went through. These are the kind of things that I do um, and core principles that people mm-hmm. believe in that are pushing them yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to chase the dreams that they want to chase. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, what if you had to distill – like your definition of success Mm -hmm. down to like what you personally feel as success, what would it be? Um, I mean, that's kind of, I don't know why is it difficult to define at this moment, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but uh, just being, you know, I don't. I don't care how much I'm, money I make. Um, it's not. It's not that important for me, to me. Right. Uh, this the success has always been like a, just like what I do, and then just make enough money to feed your feed your family. That's mm-hmm. that's all I mm-hmm. want. But in 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 good way, not like like a, you know. I just want to make money. Right. And just want to do this every day to, to 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 make money, but just interact with the people around you. Also, you know, in the community, mm-hmm. uh, I love you know. In my shop, every day we see I see a lot of different people with a different problem, different background. At first, it was a stressful because you hear, hear all these different problems they have. I have to listen to them. I have to try to fix them. But now I'm enjoying it right now because mm-hmm. every day I'm meeting new people <laughs> with right. a, with a new background, and then I, I kind of like it right now. Uh, talking to people not just about the computer, but you know where they came from, you know wh- what they do, and things like that. It, it, just the fun, yeah. Just, ha- yeah, just having fun, and then uh, in the process we talk about you know w- you know common thing with the customers and different people. Uh, so I guess the definition of success for me is uh, just, you know, just live uh, happy with the people. I mean, I didn't, I didn't knew that. I didn't know that before when I uh, worked for LG for a long time, but I realize right now, as you get older, <laughs> there's nothing left except the people around you. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I probably can make a lot of money uh, staying in LG or big company, but I just want to meet, be uh, meet with the new people, uh, make a good friend. Um, um, you know, I'm part of this small community here in Canton. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess that's, the, that's my definition of the success. That's what I'm, you know, driving for right now. Yeah. It's, just, just doing what you're passionate right, about and, so. and interacting with people yeah. and, and forming relationships with mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. rather than a, rather than going a for dollar bill. Yeah. Dollar bill, the, the big pack check or things like that. Right. So, um, so, so it's just like, go out and do it. Don't like plan because you kind of like discuss, just go out and do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Do you think a lot of people spend too much planning, too much time planning instead of doing? Yeah, I see some people do that, and I did. I, I did that for myself too. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big planner. I, I right. do a lot of planning before I do. Even I try to buy, you know, dishwasher. For example, I do, I do a lot of <laughs> a, a lot of searching on yeah. online right, yeah, and yeah. offline, and before I decide, but. Just I just realized just don't just try to think too much about it. Just go out, go out, do, and you make a mistake and you make a correction, and you right. just do it again and make a correction. It'll it'll just you know happen. Yeah, and at least if you have that forward momentum, you're able right. to make a correction and you're still moving forward. Right, and that's yeah. there's there's a dichotomy there, right? Because you can plan too little, and uh-huh. then if you jump off the cliff and you didn't look for rocks at the bottom, yeah. it's really gonna hurt if you make it to the bottom but if you 
jump off the cliff after like, oh, okay, I see that there's some water down there. I could probably be safe. I'll dive into the water. Then I'm good. Well, and then the the final like is just standing there and planning so much. Where you're standing on the edge of the cliff, staring over, and you're like, nah. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. You start yeah. thinking of too many <laughs> possibilities, too many variables, and then you're just paralyzed. Mm-hmm. Like you can't move at all because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, so many things could go wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, like, if you go and do it, and you do break your leg by jumping, your leg will heal. Yeah, you, you can fix yourself. Like he said, like even if you fail, you can pick yourself back up. Right. Yeah. And go again. Yeah, yeah. A yeah, lot of will... people are afraid to like fall down. Yeah. Yeah, and you can you can it, the the biggest piece is just like while you're down there. Okay, let's see here. How did I get here? How can I avoid getting here? How am I going to get myself out of it? Mm-hmm. And then you just keep keep rolling yeah, and keep yeah. moving. Sometimes forward. that's when you learn the best is when you fall down. Yeah, I actually you know mm-hmm. what this is uh, really weird because I I was figuring out how I could use this quote, but um, my boxing trainer says things all the time and. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It drives me nuts because he'll say something like ethereal, like off the top of his head, this really deep philosophical thing while we're doing mitts or we're, mm-hmm. we're training. And then five minutes later, he can't remember what he said. And I'm like, oh, jeez. So <laughs> I've gotten in this habit now at the gym <laughs> where he'll say something and then he sees me run to my duffel bag and I grab my phone and I type it into my phone real quick. Yeah, yeah. And cause he's, so today when we, I was leaving the gym, he was like, okay, what'd you write down? And I was like, oh, like you saw me? And he was like, yeah, I saw you. He was like, I don't remember what I said, but I want to hear it. So yeah, this is actually what he said today. He said, falling down in frustration is a gift. It can be used as the ultimate form of learning or motivation. But if you don't learn from it or you let it get the best of you, it's not a gift anymore. It becomes torture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. if you if you just lay down there and you're frustrated with a broken leg instead of saying, hey, I'm going to go get it casted and then yeah. get some crutches and we'll hobble along for a little bit. But eventually I'll be yeah. back to sprinting. You can walk yeah. again. Right. I really – yeah, I really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I um, – love reading you know, like different books or listening to audio books and stuff like that is there any authors that you that you like looking at or uh, like a podcast that you listen to or a resource that you use for like um if you're looking for business inspiration or ideas oh, okay. or um uh, any like recommendations as far as material for people to look at that you've used in the past i mean i don't go to the online uh much <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Looking for podcasts. Uh, usually, where I get an inspiration is uh, I'm, I'm a Christian, um, so um, I don't know if it's appropriate to. Oh yeah, no. Go ahead. Tell yeah. about the religious yeah, yeah, belief, yeah, yeah. but you know. No, I'm 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 blatantly a Christian as well. So yeah. it's oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, no, you're but good. We're, we're in a Catholic college. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I forgot. I'm sure if I, if I tried to suppress Christianity on Walsh's campus, <laughs> yeah. I'd get some backlash. Okay. So. You, might, you might turn into flames or something. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I'm a... We, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, every day, I, I pray every day, every morning before I go to sleep, um, and then there's always the the word from the uh, from the church every week. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's the, that's the the, the words that I strictly follow. Um, I don't follow other people's. Actually, uh, you know, I, there's a good quote, uh, you know, definitely. But because of my uh, belief, uh, that's that's the where I get most of the inspiration. The Bible. Yeah, um, and then I know the wor- the God always work help me through people around me. Um, mm-hmm. It's not like a, a lot of people believe God that He does all these uh, supernatural thing, you know, just ma- magical, you know, magic. Right, right. I don't believe that. Uh, it's always been, you know, even in the Bible past, it's always been a people. The work for God, you know, they help you through the difficult times. Right. So I truly believe that. Um, so that's why I pray every day. Yes. Yeah, and that's um, my. Uh, and I keep bringing up Marquise at this point, but that's why he's so big on mm-hmm. um, 
like we were not allowed to cuss at the gym. I just had to do 20 push-ups today um, because I used profanity in the gym. And so that's the consequence mm-hmm. is you have to do push-ups every time you <laughs> cuss. Um, and some of the workouts get pretty intense, so it's yeah. really easy to slip up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the reasons that he does that is because that's what, I mean, he, he stands for. It's just like this is where our community – that if we like work through God, we're going to work through each other and we help mm. push each other yeah. to the next level. And yeah. um, that's kind of where I kind of, uh, point to where it's just with fate, time, and circumstance, um, with something that I added on to it. I used that concept in the speech that I gave here at Walsh, but um, well, something that I added on to it was that God controls those three things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you're going to end up where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to get there for the reasons that you're supposed to get there. You just have to take your hands off your eyes and see it. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think that deep down, a lot of people have that, like you said, that little nagging feeling that's like, I need to be outside the box. Like I should go (laughs) be outside the box. Mm -hmm. And it's there, but people either talk themselves out of it or they're Mm -hmm. afraid to follow it or society tells them that it's not okay to do that. Yeah. Um, there's so many limiting factors to it Mm. that people are paralyzed by it and they Mm. can't move forward. Mm -hmm. You need to take the leap of faith. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so that's like, you're standing on the edge of that cliff and whether there's rocks at the bottom or whatever else, it's just, okay, if I break my leg, I'm going to be able to, to get up and keep moving Mm -hmm. because I've, I have this faith that I'm going to be able to push past it. Well, once you find that, then you find comfort in going and exploring Mm -hmm. because you know that God is like on your side. He's yeah on your team yeah yeah that's the big reason that i just do it because i know i have a faith that he's going to be with me all the time that's the one reason why i just do it (laughs) yeah and if you're doing it for the right reasons and you want to help people and you're not malicious about it yes like um i know that like my dad runs a medical sales company Mm -hmm. right and he has told me multiple times where there's been times where he's like oh like i could donate this money to a charity but he's like, we really, if I do that, we might struggle to pay bills at the end of the month. But he's kind of almost always said, you know what, I need to donate. He's mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm being called to do this. I'm going to donate the money. And then he was like, and then weirdly enough, we make a $50,000 sale <laughs> like two <laughs> weeks later. He was like, somehow it always comes <laughs> through. <laughs> and he was like, and if I, the, the couple of times that I didn't give that 500 bucks, no like money. we <laughs> lost the sale or something else crazy <laughs> happened. He was like, oh, okay. I don't know how much more blatant you can get than that. Um, and whether you believe that's the universe or you're religious or you're not religious or anything else, that's kind of like, I, it just breaks down to, I think that principle of that law of attraction where it's, if you're doing positive things and you want the best for people and you're trying to help other people out and you realize that we're all on a same team as humans, um, whether it's to really, to, to reach a religious end goal or, or just to have a, a, a good society, if we're mm-hmm. all on the same team and we're all trying to help each other to the next level, mm-hmm. that creates a totally different dynamic mm-hmm. than having 80 million people in the size of Indiana <laughs> constantly trying to fight <laughs> to see who's going to be the next person up on the totem pole. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's able to create that culture of yeah. kind of that American dream idea where it's just, it's not all about the cars, it's not all about the money, it's not about working for this big corporation or having right. a title, it's more than that. Mm-hmm. It's more than that, yes, definitely, yes. Nice. Um, okay, so, I mean, to, to kind of close out, mm-hmm. right, we walked through all the way from, I mean, your military service to to it, working with these big companies and Experimac and everything like that, and at this point, um, to kind of just close out the podcast, I want to give you um, the opportunity to just, if there's something that um, you want to tell, like, the people here, and I know that we kind of talked about this a little bit when I came into your store, where it was just understand the amount of opportunity that's here, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So if there's just, I mean, the floor is yours. If there's just to end it and to kind of wrap things up, whatever message you want to try to impart. Um, okay. It's it's all it's all you. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't have a lot to say, but um, I'm not a, I'm not a smartest person in, in you know in the world where you know I, I'm not an intelligent people. I'm a person, um, but only thing I can say is um, 
Um, I'm, I, I'm proud of myself because I'm making it happen. Um, whatever it is, it's, it's a personal, if it's a personal or business, if I see that it has to be done, um, you just go out there, do it. Don't tr try to think about it. Don't try to think about the water risk involved, whatever. Uh, you never know what the risks are if, in, if you don't try it. So I would say, uh, you know, coming into the United States uh, from totally different culture, uh, you know, I see even in this small city of Canton, uh, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities for the young people, even the older people. I mean, if you uh, try to do something good for the community and people here, I mean, it's, it's going to happen to you um, no matter what. Uh, it's going to take time. I'm, of course, you're going to lose money. You're going to have a difficult times. Uh, you're going to have a failure. Uh, you're going to have a downtime. But if you keep doing it and patient enough, um, you're going to get through it. I'm sure no matter who you are. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're coming from South Korea or American or somebody else. Just do it. Um, just make it happen. I mean, I, I truly believe in doing it. Um, I didn't realize this before, uh, before I started this company, but I just realized how important it is to just go out there and do stuff rather than just planning it. I know the planning is important, but, you know, not as important as the doing it, actually. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to say to, you know. Yeah, and you may think that you didn't have a lot to say, but I think that just that little bit right there says a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, describe the whole podcast. Yeah, Pretty go much. and do yeah, it. Yeah, man, we don't even. Don't plan it. Either. I'll just tell people, <laughs> hey, don't, you don't yeah. even have to listen to the whole, to the whole hour. <laughs> just listen to the last 15, yeah, last two little, minutes. Little clip at the end. Yeah, but. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming out. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, mm -hmm. You want to? You can go ahead and and plug um, for Experimac. So, where are you guys located? The people find you on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Is there a uh, website? Yeah, we have. We are located at the corner of Dressler and Fulton, right by the Rooster Swings Restaurant. If you know mm -hmm. that restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we open Monday through Saturday, ten to seven. Um, you know, we work on all the Apple computers, iPhone, iPads. So if you have any problem or if you're in the market for another computer, iPad, iPhone, we'll be able to help you. Uh, we'll help you select the right computers for you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, thank you for tuning in to JJD Thoughts Podcast Episode 4. I'm your host, Jan Almsi, and I hope to see you back for Episode 5. Great. Beautiful. <laughs> see, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Yeah, you just... All good. Yep. So Wait, we're... You're way better at interviewing than you thought you are, man. That was definitely I don't know. not the, yeah, that was the hardest interview smooth. at all. I don't know. I don't know. Just say whatever I... That's, that's what it's all about, yeah. <laughs> just say whatever is on your mind. <laughs>